Ladies and gentlemen, good evening all. Uh, it is a really wonderful occasion for me uh, to have uh, this opportunity having dialogue with uh, members of uh, Foreign Policy Association. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Noel Latif, uh, for this wonderful occasion. Uh, of course, the talk of town nowadays here in the United States is your presidential race. And this is your presidential race, but why Korean people has or are paying that much of attention to your presidential race? In my personal view, because United States is the very leadership country of global village. That's why we pay attention to every statement issued by your candidates. Uh, since a uh, couple of weeks ago, or you know, pretty much lately, we heard a lot about something related with a beauty pageant, a miss of a certain specific country, and something in relation with uh, uh, taxation or tax payment. But at the earlier stage of your presidential election uh, campaign, we were told also through your media or through our own news lines, some, I may say, negative statement uh, by, by your candidates, I may say, about free trade as a whole or sometimes singling out certain agreement, for example, Korea-US free trade agreement, whether this has been good for US economy or not. And their statements to my reading was a bit negative. So I prepared a presentation before I you know, can uh, answer uh, your question, if, if, if any. Uh, so give me 10 minutes or less, or you know, more or less 10 minutes, uh, first of all, for my presentation. This is not the first cut, please. Oh, yeah. 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 First of all, are you looking at the scene? Or this podium really stand in the way of your side? Okay, all right, good. Well, first of all, brief history of our bilateral relationship. Uh, no, oh, what's that? Yes, this is my first cut <laughs> to introduce. Really, you know, the bilateral relationship between our two countries is really a successful relationship of a mutually important partners. And that was possible only because we based, the, the relationship has been based on shared value of market economy and democracy. And the such relationship with the US has been really the backbone for Korea for its transformation, as uh, Professor Kim has told us already, uh, its transformation from one of the least developed country, particularly in the wake of a Korean War, into an industrialized and democratic society of today. Uh, here, an interesting, my personal view to share with you is, if you look at the history of Korea or that part of the world, every time US disengaged itself from Korean Peninsula, kind of a disaster followed. Let me give you examples. Number one is, do you know, have you ever heard about a treaty named Tafta Katsura Treaty? Tafta was a Secretary of State of the United States, while Katsura is the foreign, foreign Minister of Japan. And the deal was to recognize mutually your interest in the Philippines, while US recognized the interest or the influence of Japan over the Korean Peninsula. And that kind of deal was followed by uh, Russo-Japanese War in 1905, and finally, Korea fallen into Japanese rule. Another uh, good example is uh, Atchison Declaration, Atchison Line. That was done in 1950, right before the breakout of Korean War. And the declaration was the defense line of the United States against communism was some, somehow below the south of Korean Peninsula and Taiwan. That means Korean Peninsula and Taiwan was excluded from uh, US defense line. 
And that entailed in the breakout of Korean War, a big disaster. And that kind of a disaster was not only heavily affected the destiny of Korea, but that of the world, and that part of the world as a whole. Well, I really hope, you know, personally, such kind of disengagement never happen again in the future. <laughs> well, now, Korea is a middle power. Why, why I say middle power? Uh, the latest information or data I got uh, is the one IMF, International Monetary Fund, uh, has announced publicly that in terms of uh, GDP size, Korea is now ranked 11th largest of the world. So I may say Korea is a middle power, safely. We have al almost uh, 190 United Nations member countries. So 11th out of them is quite, quite a ranking. And Korea is now sixth largest trading partner for United States. So we have a lot of things to work together, you know, around the challenges that we are facing regionally or globally. Well, about, again, the brief history about, you know, our, uh, what do you call chorus, Korea-US Free Trade Agreement. Actually, that was not initiated by government officials or the government is themselves. It was initiated and recommended by ordinary people working in business circle in both countries. We had a Korea-US Business Council, and that was the members of that council who strongly recommended to both governments to tackle on this uh, you know, untested war, which we call free trade agreement between the two countries. Uh, and it took almost uh, six years for two administrations to work on that recommendation, and we started negotiation, and that was, um, I was the lead negotiator <laughs> at that time, and we had eight rounds of official uh, negotiation and many uh, intersessional meetings. And finally, the negotiation itself was concluded on uh, April 2nd, 2007, but even before uh, the ink got dry, uh, dried, we had a supplemental negotiations upon the request of the United States, because then Democrat-led your Congress has made, quote and unquote, a new trade policy to strengthen the labor, light, labor rights and uh, environmental protection. Well, we accommodated that. We accommodated. So there was a sp supplemental negotiations, and that's done. And finally, uh, the agreement was officially signed on June 30, 2007, the very next day your trade promotion authority expired. So that was a really thrilling moment for us, you know, <laughs> not, to, not to go beyond the, the deadline. Well, uh, the, but the conclusion or signing of the treaty was not the end of the story. It should, uh, it sh it should be ratified or approved by the Congress of uh, respective countries. The two presidents, uh, Dan, President Bush and in our side, a President Roe, they initiated you know, this agreement, but they couldn't wrap up the deal. So we have new president in your side, Barack Obama, and we had our own you know, new president, Mr. Lee myung Bak. Well, you remember in 2000, uh, 2008, uh, there was a, a very serious financial crisis, and your automobile industry was uh, severely hit by this kind of a financial difficulty. And there's another request from US side to have uh, some additional negotiations. It was terribly difficult for me to explain to Korean people why I s have to sit again <laughs> to reopen you know, a certain chapter uh, which has uh, already been finished and announced publicly. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we really try to accommodate, you know, uh, the, the difficult, the, the actual uh, reality. So uh, those are the, you know, important outcome of additional uh, negotiations, mostly about, you know, to give some leeway for, you know, U.S. automobile industry. And there's uh, some give and take. One good example is here, uh, suspension of measures related to patent uh, pharmaceutical products. That is, uh, f you know, for any innovative drugs, where U.S. has a very, you know, competitive uh, edge, when it is introduced, 
US want us any kind of a copy drug, what you call generic, cannot be on sale in the market without the approval of the patent holder, something like that. So there's a kind of a linkage issue. Uh, the patent and the right of uh, genetic producers, you know, to sell their products in the market. So it was a very sensitive and heavy, you know, uh, topic. But anyhow, uh, we got a leeway of uh, three years to be suspended. And uh, last year, we introduced uh, that system. So this, this is not anymore a, an issue. But anyhow, five years ago, that was a big issue. Uh, and finally, uh, Implementation Act is uh, approved by your Congress, and this agreement entered into force uh, March 15, 2012. Well, let us view over you know, the general performance of this agreement. Well, you have a quick, uh, sorry, quick read here, but you know, my emphasis is here, the comparison. From 2011, Till 2015, last of, you know, over the last four years, this is good comparison because that agreement ended in force 2012. 2011 means one year before. World trade. Uh, there's a a slight you know increase in uh, trading services, but a very you know uh, deep down in trading goods. Uh, so there's almost um, what 1.4 trillion dollar down you know, over the last four years. Why? Our bilateral trade in two-way sense, uh, both in trading goods in blue collar and green collar trading services, there was a quite good increase, a, a very robust increase. It's almost a $20 billion up for the last four years. So this is a good comparison. Well, maybe everybody here in this room, you know, will recognize that the global trade has been stalled, you know, for last um, some uh, some some past e years, and uh, well, uh, most of the economy in the world is uh, shown kind of downturn or very sluggish. Uh, that's why the world trade uh, is not shown some kind of uh, you know uh, what can I say uh, bullish kind of increase. You know, on the contrary, it's very timid down, while our two-way trade is uh, still good. Well, so in consequence, if you look at the market share mutually, your market share in Korean market and our share in your market has, has, has gone up, particularly for US products, your share taking uh, in Korean market altogether has went up from 8.5% to 11%, while ours started with a 26 and now we are reaching over 3%. This is a good sign. Well, let me put you a question. Is chorus a cause of a U.S. trade deficit? Well, some candidates <laughs> have touched on this question, you know. But my answer so far, what I found, is no. Because if you look at the economic growth, both world and Korea, well, uh, the world is blue and Korean is brown. brown. Uh, you may witness that Korea's economic growth is, uh, is these days quite shy. You know, it's not really something like five, eight, ten years ago, right? Two digit, or nine percent a year, or seven percent a year. That was uh, those were the day that the figures gone away. Now we are, you know, going along the line of uh, you know, world average. So that means I'm not satisfied with this line, uh, this performance. But anyhow, this is reality. And that means, that means, although we want to import more things from the world, more, more, more products from the US, the economy doesn't really perform that much. So look at this diagram. Korea's import from world uh, over the last four years diminished, minus a 6.8% down. You know? And there's a slight dimin you know, decrease, but this is really you know, negligible minus 1.2 down you know, uh, in our Im importation from the United States. So I, I think this is a, another good comparison. Uh, one you know, interesting finding uh, is, yes, Korea, if you look at, I have a laser point here. Yes, this is good. 
I'm sorry, yeah, good. <laughs> well, over the last four years, if you, you know, uh, add these two figures, it's almost, uh, what, $15 billion increase in our export to U.S. market. But here's a demarcation. FTA beneficiary items and non-beneficiary items. And non-beneficiary items has a uh, lion's share of the increase. That means, for example, we sold a lot of uh, Korean-made automobiles here, Hyundai, you know, Kia, and that's a part of this 10 billion increase. But if there's any tariff reduction or any kind of beneficiary on that specific item, which is car, no. Your tariff on automobile, which is 2.5, stayed there intact, intact until the end of last year. And it now entered into zero. So we don't have any tariff either side. We eliminated ours and you eliminated yours only January 1st of this year. So if I say up until end of 2015, 2.5 was there as tariff, but we sold a lot. We sold a lot. That's why I put it here, non-beneficiary, FTA non-beneficiary. There's another product, steel products. From the very beginning, most of the steel products enjoy tariff zero. And another one, IT products. You know that, Mr. McArthur. Uh, separately from F FTA, uh, we have a separate international agreement which we call ITA. And it, it handles with you know, all IT products to go into zero among member countries. So in accordance with that ITA agreement, uh, IT products have been enjoying already tariff zero. And there's a, a very big you know, increase of our uh, export to the United States. And this, is, this means you know, 10 billion increase. While FDA beneficiary items, only maybe half of them. So chorus, if you say, that was the real reason for you know, a trade deficit of the United States, that's not correct. On the other hand, let me see your side. This is Korean import from U.S. If I put it the other way around, U.S. export to U.S., there's a lot of benefit out of this uh, you know, agreement. If you look at U.S. made the passenger car, pharmaceuticals, beef, cheese, almond, wine, there's a you know, strong reduction of tariffs, existing tariffs from you know, 8% to 4 and now 0, something like that. And import value by 2015 for passenger car is almost a 12 billion. And this is a 36.6% you know, increase four years ago. Well, this shows a, 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 a what can I say, good explanation that United States you know, products have enjoyed, well, quite, quite good you know, out of uh, the agreement. Next. Well, uh, passenger car, if I put uh, other word, automobile, has been always the centerpiece of our trade talk. Well, that's why I showed uh, this diagram. This is uh, 10 years ago, 2006. And now, we are, well, 2016, but we are still the year going on. So let me say uh, 2015. If you look at the green side, this is uh, Korean homemade, the domestic, the market share. And this brown one is uh, foreign affiliates, like uh, GM Korea working in you know, Korea. You have, GM has uh, four assembly plants in, in, in Korea. And the information I got announced by GM Korea themselves that the output from these four uh, assembly plants, which GM is, uh, is running, takes 20%, uh, one-fifth of total you know, GM's global sale. So they are running good business. That's part of this uh, foreign affiliates here you know, in this part. And this is imported car, the portion. It's getting growing, get growing all the time. So I showed, uh, I showed this diagram uh, that we are not really you know, kind of uh, protecting our market. Once we ask our trading partners to open for our items, then that means we are ready to open our market too. Uh, this is um, uh, Department of Commerce information that I quote. Uh, top seven U.S. export market, starting with uh, Canada, Mexico, China, Japan, United Kingdom, Germany, Korea. Korea is now sixth. 
you know, before Germany, uh, it is uh, reversed. But anyhow, this is uh, what? Uh, up to 2014. Uh, the export uh, increase, you know, uh, with uh, these top seven partners, here's the figures. So Korea is a good market. Only after Mexico, Canada, which are your NAFTA partners. Then China, of course, this is emerging market. Then Korea gives the you know, a fourth biggest percentage increase for your export. Uh, this one is also you know, uh, US ITC uh, data. Uh, their explanation, I, I, I really don't like to you know, make any quotation on this, but just for your information. This means uh, with and without, you know, hypothetically, if without FTA with Korea, they say the deficit should have been much, much heavier. And their calculation is minus 44 billion. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big money. But you know, due to this uh, free trade agreement, uh, they are now, this is only for trading goods. But let us see trading services. You know, US is very strong, uh, has a very strong uh, competitive edge on, on services. So this is your export, and this is our export. There's always um, about 10 billions of uh, you know, US surplus as far as uh, trading services are concerned. Another uh, good sign, uh, look at, this is 2011, and the year the agreement entered into force, there is a sharp increase of IPR export to Korea, like, uh, what, software, books, or music, CD, something like that. So your IPs, you know, uh, of course there has been increase, but, you know, uh, the sharp increase, uh, Sharp increase after the, uh, the agreement entered into force. Well, let me talk about investment. This is another good, you know, uh, another important aspect of uh, of the you know trade trade agreement. Well, again, comparison. Okay. Uh, inflow FDIs from the world to U.S. market. Of course, there has been an increase, but from Korea to U.S. It's a uh, it's more than doubled. And employment and wage, if you look at, this is uh, your uh, Census Bureau. Now, Korean companies are employing 45,000 local people nationwide. And the average wage for them is $91,000 a year, which is much higher than average you know, uh, foreign, co uh, foreign companies. Those local people hired by by foreign invested company. So that means Korean investment is now producing quality job. Well, those are the Korean investment working in US. Look at uh, 2011, 15, 13, 12, 12. These, these are the years they introduced their, their investment. And I asked them, they were pretty much encouraged by this uh, disagreement or with a strong anticipation that their business will be much more robust, you know. Uh, due to uh, the trade agreement. So uh, this, I would like to show you where they are working. Well, I'm going to my conclusion. Of course, uh, having an agreement is not the end of the story. As far as we are trading, items are going back and forth, and there's issues. There are some compliance issues raised by either, either side. That they, what is at stake is whether we are ready to talk to find a good solution, a solution which is mutually satisfactory. And we are doing that way because there's a built-in consultation mechanism in the agreement, chapter by chapter. And many things have been resolved like this. Those are good you know, uh, examples. But still we have some ongoing issues like uh, liberalization of legal services. Well, the talks are half done already, but still we didn't reach yet at the final solution, but the consultation is uh, underway. And pharmaceutical reimbursing pricing uh, policy, those are raised by US side. While we have uh, some concerns about the, the rising numbers of anti-dumping duties, 
you know, on Korean products, particularly steel products. And it is actually true that the cases are going up and up, uh, particularly at this, uh, you know, political season of uh, presidential campaign. Uh, we are really worrying about, you know, the rise of anti-dumping duty. And expansion of visa quota for Korean professionals. This is a, a year old, you know, issue, but I don't think this is the right time to, to raise such kind of thing <laughs> now. Uh, this is not a good season to talk on this. Well, my conclusion. Our joint commitment to free trade is key to building mutually prosperous future. Because you may have already witnessed Doha round, people say, it's dead, it's dead. You know, there's no progress, you know, we are making no, no headway. And uh, as I told you, in many countries, you know, and, well, anti-dumping cases are going up and up. That means to protect their own product or their own market. And Korean people and companies are quite concerned about some negative notions expressed by, you know, you know who. Uh, <laughs> while we have a strong conviction that, you know, course FTA is a good model of a free trade. So uh, may I repeat once again, uh, our joint commitment for free trade is very important. Thank you very much.